Hey folks, Rob back for another Rob Plays, and this time, continuing with my recent bit of Atari 8-bit love, we've got, got to look at, well, as it says there, Stunt Car Racer, the amazing conversion of Jeff Craven's C64 masterpiece that came out earlier this year, uh, written by Fandle and, where are my notes, uh, Erglindra, I've probably messed that up quite a bit, and I'm incredibly sorry for that. <laughs> Is of course the conversion they did using the C64 version as a base with you know, a few enhancements and optimizations. Um, the big detail to note is whereas the C64 version, of course, rather than 64K, this Atari version actually needs 128K RAM, which is lucky because I've got my 130XE right in front of me that it's loading on. Um, it is friendly for both PAL and NTSC machines, so if you, uh, regardless of what position you are, as long as you've got 128K RAM, you're good to go. Um, the whole screen here is amazing. I don't think the 64 version had a loading picture. Um, I haven't loaded my tape up in forever. But that's a very nice version of the box art. Um, that you probably see it as a thumbnail anyway. So let's hit space. And like Stunt Car Racer opens up. You get to put your league in. So I'm just going to join my league. I'm up in. Multiplayer, of course, is not um, between machines. I think it's just multiple players take turns through each division. Um, what I'm going to do with this video to keep it simple, I'm just going to do a run through Division 4 because, hey, Division 4 is pretty straightforward. Start the racing season, and of course, up against Jumping Jack. Now, this is going to be hilarious, but I actually recorded this entire episode before and forgot to hit record on my, on my, uh, on, on the actual capture. So I had the commentary, the full commentary, but no gameplay. So here I am starting it again because I care. All right. So... So you can see it sort of does the approach the 64 user uses with the field visuals um, and then the, the other instrumentation around. Now the difference here is the 64 version had a bit nicer cockpit view. Um, I'm probably going to probably be a heretic for saying that but I still think the cockpit looks a little nicer on the 64 than it does here. Um, on the upside I'm doing much better than I did last time. Um, last time I fell off the track by this point and ended up losing this race. I actually only won one race out of the four, so as long as I don't mess it up for y'all, I should actually be in a good position this time around. Um, something I'm going to probably do with this video is I'm going to run through the season, and after the season, I'm going to actually probably do a, a secondary bit, which is just... Oh, Coke. Oh, oh, thank goodness. Um, I'm probably going to do a secondary bit in which I do a frame rate comparison because one of the, one of the things I'm very interested in is how much better does this Atari version perform over the C64 original? Um, I mean, I'm playing this, you know pretty much a stock 130XE. That was probably a bit too much of a jump, and yeah, but oh, okay. But we're on lap two. We've got a nice. Look. We've got a. We've got the fastest time, so we're already ahead of the AI. Um, just got to keep it steady for a lap and a half. Um, but yeah, because one of the things is, I think the frame rate is better here, um, but I'm interested in knowing how much. So I'm going to probably do a little bit of analysis later. Um, I'll hook the 64 up, uh, do Division 4, do a Division 4 race there, just to see, really, what the difference is like. Because I think, I'd be, I'm interested to know, and people say it's faster, but I'm quite interested in scientifically, um, yeah. Probably not the most scientific of approaches, you know, your digital foundries and like will probably be not happy by methods, but I'll probably much just grab footage and compare, you know, how long it takes to update a frame in Final Cut uh, as I edit it. But okay, we're up to track. The last bit now. We've got a good healthy lead here, so that's... I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, I'm not... Third damage, one bullet hole. I don't know, I call them bullet holes across the top, the, when you get lots of damage. Yes, race done. Um, I call them bullet holes across the top. As they are, of course, the bits that, you know, you get, they accelerate your damage when the damage crack hits them. Anyway, press fire. Nice, 49, I think that's my best time there so far. Um, I only got three points, which means if I win against Jumping Jack, I'll be in the lead. Oh yeah, and then I've just got to do Roadhog. So the humpback. 
this is where I really messed up. So I've got to be careful on this one. So there might be a little less commentary here. Let's see how we go. There's a good, the sound I think is good enough for what really you expect of this. Um, it's such a great conversion and I'm really just happy to see the Atari getting some good love. And I'm hoping that um, I'll be trying to schedule in some more Atari stuff on the channel as things go on. Um, I'm so glad to have one here in the office again. Uh, I already got the lead good over the hump. A little more speed as we go down the Make sure we maintain that lead. Because of course with stunt car racing you want to be doing more than 140. Um, to make sure you're you're inching ahead of the other driver. That's sort of the that's that's the rule of thumb for stunt car racer success. If you can keep your speed up above 140, you'll be doing okay. Um, and there we are. So you've got to basically be ready to boost um, very quickly if you do have to slow down heavily. Um, which, you know, for some of the later tracks is something you have to be aware of. Um, you know, your your draw bridges, um, ski jump. Ooh. You know, how much... I, I'm, I'm starting to feel like I want to... I want to do some Star Car Racer stuff. Oh. Like a lot. This game is so good. Got a pretty good lead so far, so I'm probably not gonna push things further until we start going downhill, like we are now. And I didn't crash yet, so. But man, that moment. Oh, that moment before was like, whoa. Just in the, in the um, run, race on the little ramp. Oh, that was scary when I was just like bouncing over the. bouncing over near the start line. So glad I kept it together. So glad. Anyway. Going down. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. We've got a sizable lead on the computer though, which I'm pretty happy about. So as long as I don't mess up the next lap, that's two in the bag. I'd say wish me luck, but I probably jinx it in the process, so keep going, let's keep going, over the top, start powering down for some extra speed, yeah. Saga Racer is such a unique formula, I don't really wish it, I really wish it got more love, um, just even seeing the history of the development, where it started out as just being these sort of hills on a flat landscape, and then the, the race tracks were really made to sort of link it all together, and I, I like... And I, I like that sort of experimental kind of game development. Um, it's one of the things I think we lose, even now. Like, I think we've lost it, where a, a game could just develop from a simple concept and evolve. Like, you, you know, I think it's just the nature of many hands being involved with this. I think, like, oh yeah, two races down. That's a sigh of relief. That's a sigh of relief because now I am right on top with two races to go. If I win, um, so in theory, if I beat, if I beat Roadhog on the little ramp, I should be, I should be eligible for promote or promotion. Wish me luck. I was, and I love this detail where you get to rotate the world. I kind of wish, like, Stunk Car, Stunk Car Racer was on modern hardware so you could see it in real time. That would be so cool. Wouldn't it? Just, like, being able to really rotate that. But alas. Let's get ready to start race number five. Or three for me. I always get used to that, like, Start now. Gas, gas, brake, honk. Well, not really much braking and honking there. But we've pushed into the lead, so that's a nice start there. Push into the lead. Oops. Okay. Push the lead and hit the gas a bit. Not really hit the gas, hit the brakes. We're over, and that's a good landing. 
So you sort of get the rhythm of, of driving it. So good. Anyway, round, round this corner. Go up. And we're going. Oh, ooh. That's almost where I had a stack last time. I don't want to repeat that risk. Oh, oh, took a little damage there, but not too much. It's still good, it's still good. Pull up, then push the brakes back. So it can coast to 140 to go over the hit jump. Ah, perfect landing. Get a little speed and brakes. Funny, when I was a kid playing this, I used to be a lot rougher with the car. Like, I would pretty much floor it into corners. I wouldn't really try to slow down much. Um, but you can sort of see, like, you get a bit of love and your car will serve you well. Anyway, coming around this corner. Lap two. Ooh, ooh, those sparks are already moments of scariness. But we're there. Lap three. Uh, let's hit the brakes. Pull it down to speed. A little damage, not much. I'm not too fast. Get up to speed for the jump. Then brake. Nice, 1100 units. Got a pretty good lead over the computer now, so this is how we show them. We show them how it's done. Oh, okay, come around the corner. Get that final little mini jump. Ooh, not much. We're all right, doing all right damage wise. Get over the top. But yeah, when I think about like what you expect from this version, I think, truthfully, it's got to be said, I think there isn't a bad version of Stunt Car Racer out there. Um, all the current computer versions I've seen are all pretty darn solid. Uh, I mean, the best ones really are the Amiga and ST ones, if only for the fact that you can link those two machines up with a serial cable and race each other in multiplayer. And the fact that it's like, it's not just linked to Amigas up or linked to STs up. The fact you can link um, both machines together is so cool. Anyway, that's race five in the bag, because regards to the fact, right now, Roadhog can't touch me. So even if I crash out of this race, I will have enough points to advance to Division 3. And that'll probably be the bulk of the video, and I'll, and I'll do a quick little uh, amendment to, uh, to show off the technical comparison that is easier for me to do in post than it is for me to try and, try and do here. But anyway, let's get ready for this final race. Give my stunt car some gas. And Roadhog's gotten in the front, but... Watch out, buddy, because it won't be for... No, 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 no! Oh! Ah, ah, ah. Oh, what happened? Never try and overtake going round corners. Alright, bring me over the track. Come on! There we go. And unfortunately, I'm at the base of the hump. And that's what's going to kill me. That's what killed me. The, um... Kill is not the appropriate. That's what took me out. When I did this the last time, and I did the exact same thing, that's why I lost. Because I, I, um... I had to... floor it to get back up the hump. Um... Oh... No, no, no. Got to try and keep it in. Keep it over... Okay. Oh, we lost a lot of speed, and you can see he's already a thousand units ahead of me, and he's just got that lead mostly off the back of, um... Mostly off the back of me having to fight my way up that hill to get some speed again. But, uh, let's have a look. He's... He's what? Well, 830 units. Mm. So, 7... 50. And we're, like... Quite a way damaged now, so I've got to be careful. I right, survive the next. Come on, Laura's are come down. Yeah, gotta try and be careful now because you can see picks a little time. Just get a little bit of damage, and I'm off the track. And oh, darn it! Okay, press fire. Come on. Thankfully, it's not too much. Yeah, this race is a write-off now. I just really... I haven't even got the fastest lap because I crashed both times. So, at this stage, what my concern is really more about is just getting to the end. Um, 
Like, even if I don't get the fastest lap, I'll have more than enough points to, to um, get the promotion, so... Not that's really going to matter, because I'm probably not going to save my slot. Um, I probably won't save my progress here. Okay, let's do this. Yeah, see, I got an even worse time than the last time. So let's... Pull it in nicely, give it a bit of boost, get the top. It's so nerve wracking when you have this little room across the arm, um, across the top of the screen to really deal for damage. Like, especially with two speed holes. I'm just going to call them, I just call them speed holes. And yes, that is very much a Simpsons thing. Uh, let's see, just give it a bit more. Oh, yeah. That was pretty much, unex that was pretty much expected, so. But at least I did it without crashing. Unfortunately, I didn't get the fastest lap. But there we go, I got my promotion to Division 3. Um... But I'm not actually going to show you Division 3, because guess what? I think I'm going to leave it here. As I've said, I'm going to leave it here, and um, what I'll do is cut to sort of a bit of a closer thing, a bit of, bit of analysis, um, technically, on how I reckon the Atari one compares speed-wise. So I definitely feel it's faster, but I'm interested in knowing, scientifically, just how much faster it is over the 64 version. Um, and if you're not interested in that, I'll just say thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the rest. Let's talk speed comparisons. This isn't a scientific test, but I made a recording for both machines of a racing lap over the little ramp. It serves as a nice test, and you can see that the Atari version is running slightly smoother than the C64 here. In fact, it was about a frame or two faster. The biggest surprise though, really is in the game speed. Completing a lap on the Atari version was just a bit ahead of the real world time elapsed, so I had a lap of 49 seconds and it was just faster than that in um, real time. The C64 version on the other hand was a little slower. My lap was around 48 seconds and it took close to a minute to actually have that run in real time. So by back the napkin calculations the Atari version is about 20% faster. And when you come to think of it that's quite a big jump. And for me at least it really redefines the experience of playing Stunt Car Racer and if you're after a new challenge, it's one worth checking out. So with that, it's time for me to say thank you all very much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.